The thing I think that I'm the most excited for with the 758 is what's going to be the topic of this video. An overview, my impression, and installation of the Cat1 three-point hitch. So I have the 750 moved over here to where I can get to access the back end of it, you know, all that, get what we need done. Um, but we'll move it over here first and uh, open up the box, see what all the parts look like. Uh, I'll tell you ahead of time I cheated. I kind of looked at the instructions to make sure I wasn't going to have to do anything too crazy. Um, I know I had seen some stuff talking about how you'd have to remove the fender deck and everything uh, to get under there, but the instructions didn't look like it said anything like that. So uh, I think we'll be able to do it all uh, with the tractor how it sits. So uh, let's move over to the bench. So first things first, we'll uh, point out some part numbers. So here we have uh, on the box BUC 10169. Um, however, when we look at the front of the instruction sheet, it says UC 18673, um, and it has a 2018 date on it. Um, so I don't know what the deal is. I'll have to look. Oh, it does say at the top BUC 10169. So maybe that's just part number for the instruction sheet. I don't know. Um, one thing also that I'll point out is on the tractors that it lists is here, it doesn't say anything about X758. It only has the 750 and the 754. Um, I checked again on John Deere's website under the uh, parts catalog section and under the 758, it does list this kit. So um, I don't, I can't imagine we'll have any issues. I wouldn't think there's really too much different going on between the 738 and the 758, obviously other than the engine. So uh, I don't think we're gonna have too much of an issue um, on the back end of this thing. So move that aside, we'll open this up, take a look at all the parts. So this is one of the things that with the X580 that eventually like really just kind of, like did it for me like I was having you know issues with the sleeve hitch it, it just wasn't really even lifting you know the basic parts um, you know to, to, to move that hitch so I'm hoping that with the actual three-point hitch on a tractor that's more so designed to do ground engaging type of work I hope we won't have problems like that <clears throat> So this is looking like the main lift bar that we use after relocating the hydraulic link. Let me see here, I'll look at the actual part F. Yeah, strap lift. So I think this is the guy that's gonna tie that together. I wanna compare this to uh, the one from the X580. So this is the lift link from the X580. So this is doing um, all the lifting from the front where the uh, mower deck attaches and back at this end is where it you know pulls on the rock shaft of the sleeve hitch. Now, I would have thought that that link for the 700 series would have been at least this thick or thicker. Um, obviously it's not, that's a, that's a little bit worrying, uh, but Another thing you also might notice is, for the most part, it's fairly straight, and this piece has this bend in it, um, which I think is where I was having a lot of my issues. So the fact that this is more in line, I think that's gonna help us out. Here's our top link. All these pieces are quite large, thick material. Everything else seems to be pretty thick. Those are the lifting links or arms. I'm not sure of the exact terminology. Another one, this one's adjustable. So I know if you're using a plow to set draft and all that stuff. Um, you know, adjust the angle that everything fits. Here's the rock shaft. This is extremely beefy uh, compared to the rock shaft that the 580, the 580 had. Uh, I'm probably going to do a lot of comparisons, so bear with me between the two. Um, but that's really all I know for now. Um, 
Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to put this stuff together, show you guys what's up, maybe help you decide whether or not this is something you want to do yourself or have a dealer attempt. Um, so yeah, that is a beefy looking part. Extremely thick steel. That is crazy. That's got to be all of probably at least a half inch, more than a half inch, five eighths. Five eighths steel on those boys. through all these all right now um, just a bunch of smaller brackets your uh, lockout or lift lockout piece um, there's hydraulic links in here because you got to relocate the lift cylinder so uh, yeah I think we're gonna have a somewhat long night at least for me I'm gonna try to keep it short for you guys um, but we'll try to get this this thing installed so uh, Next, we'll uh, jump into the first bit of instructions and get into it. Now, there are a couple uh, preparation steps. Of course, uh, you're going to want to park the machine safely, all that stuff. Um, that's just the, the standard safe, safety stuff. Now, as far as the machine goes, they tell you to remove the mower deck. Uh, mine's been removed. I honestly haven't even put it on yet at this point. Um, but I feel like that should be pretty self-explanatory for any time you're installing anything like this, um, especially if you know you're going to be having to mess with the hydraulics. Um, so remove the mower deck. Um, if the machine is equipped with a rear PTO, which I do have that kit, I'll be putting it on uh, when I come to the first transaxle fluid change. Um, I don't want to change fluid now and then have to change it a late, you know, later at 50 hours or whatever it may be. <clears throat> But if you have the rear, the rear PTO, remove and save four screws, washers, and the outer shield. So you just have to take the outer shield off. So you can install this kit with the PTO kit on. You just have to remove the, uh, the shield. So the first step uh, from the rear of the machine, remove spring pin A, washer B, and differential lock rod C from transaxle lever. So where you are looking is going to be right here. Um, we, of course, are at the back of the tractor. Right here is the back of the transaxle. Um, and then this is on the left side. So we're just gonna reach in here, pull that pin out, washer will fall out, and pull out the rod, like so. Now we are under the tractor at this point, obviously, um, and you are looking at what would be the inner side of the frame rail of the left side of the tractor. Um, so the next step is to remove clip A on the front end of the differential lock rod, remove the rod assembly from the machine. So I'm just going to pull this rod out, or pull this pin out, I should say. and then remove this rod. Now that rod will just slide out from the back, so just go to the back and pull that out. Tip, when removing your uh, differential lock linkage, turn this piece sideways, and then it will come right off. Only then will it slide out. Now you are looking at the front end of the transaxle, so this is going to be step four, is to be remove the clip A and brake rod B from transaxle lever. So right here, where my finger is there at the bottom, is the shaft for your mower deck. 
So just for reference, that's where we're at. So this is the brake shaft right here. We need to remove this little clip. And I can't really see it from the angle I'm at, but it seems like, yep, it's a ring pin. So just pull that little guy out. And then looks like there's a washer there too. And just take that out of that linkage. And I guess we'll just let that hang for now. Now, I apologize for this angle. It's essentially looking straight up. Um, step five is to remove the other end of the brake rod from the brake pivot plate. So that rod we just released from the transaxle, if you just follow that straight up, it goes into the pivot plate. There's no pin or anything. You just lift up on it, and then you can just kind of rotate it out. Now there's a caution. Uh, it's just the, the hydraulic fluid caution. So, you know, don't mess with anything if the hydraulics are under pressure. So obviously you don't have your machine running doing this. I don't know why you would. But uh, step six is to move lift control valve lever to relieve hydraulic system pressure. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't messed around with this too much and since I've never had the mower deck, I'm not entirely sure which one is gonna move this system. So I am just gonna actuate both hydraulic systems. A few times, just to make sure everything's good. It looks like that one is lowering my quick hitch. I still have the quick hitch on. Sorry if this isn't the best. I'm just holding this because it's a quick step. But our hydraulics are relieved. So I'm going to do steps 7, 8, and 9 all kind of together here. Um, I'm probably going to cut this because it's going to probably take me a minute. Um, but essentially, uh, we're going to place a pan under the lift cylinder for hydraulic fluid because now we're gonna be draining some fluid from the cylinder. Uh, we're gonna disconnect both rear and front hydraulic lines from cylinder. We're gonna slide the pivot plate towards the center of the machine. And it shows in the instructions an arrow. Essentially, we're taking it from here. Well, this area, moving it over here. So uh, right here is our front line. Back here is our rear line. Um, this is where the fun begins. Let's get into it. So this is a 13 16 wrench. You got to get a little bit creative. Um, I ended up having to get the, uh, side of the wrench up. There's like a cutout in the frame. I was able to put it in there and turn it and it's not focused on that. I was able to get it up there into that groove and turn it. And then I got to the point now to where I can move it with my fingers. So I have my cup stuffed up there, you can see. And here comes the fluid. And there we go. We got it off. I didn't have a whole lot of fluid come out of there, really. Uh, I had a lot more come out of the SCV when I was doing the uh, front quick hitch install. Um, but most of that's drained. Um, there's a little bit sitting on the frame up here, but I can just get that with a paper towel. And I'm sure a little bit more will drip, but I can clean up the rest of that later. I wanna move this. Um, okay, so now that rear fitting, um, it looks like you could probably get to it from here. I'm going to attempt to get on it from the back of the tractor first. And that's definitely not going to happen. I don't like it when I see lines twisting. You don't really have a choice. There's not any kind of nut built in on the line. That one's draining a bit more. Let's see if I can get my cup in there. Let that drain for a bit. All right, we'll continue on.
there we go. Now, move you back just a hair so we can see this shaft that we're supposed to slide. So it just says to slide the shaft to the center, this guy, like that. It moves over pretty easy. Let's move on. The next steps, I think I'm gonna do a little bit out of order. So uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So essentially 10, remove two nuts and U-bolt holding lift cylinder to the machine frame. So if you look right back here at the top of the wrench, there's that U-bolt going around the cylinder. We'll be removing that. And then cotter pin, two bushings and pin from cylinder rod end. So that is right up here, that pin there, and that, I guess it's like a goldish brown looking uh, pin. So we'll be taking that out. And then the pin, uh, remove pin through hole C on the outside of the frame. So we'll move to the outside and then discard U-bolt, two nuts, two bushings, and cotter pin. So it has you remove the U-bolt nuts first I'm already under here, so we're gonna remove this pin first. Now it says cotter pin, and I hate cotter pins, but we got lucky, and they just have a little ring clip on here. So we'll get that ring clip out. I would much, much rather have ring clips everywhere than cotter pins. It's just tough to get to because everything in here is tight spaced. Hmm. This wouldn't be hard to remove, but once you get a very light coating of hydraulic fluid on your hands, it makes it hard. So there's that. We'll pop out one bushing. And then the second one will probably just come out when we pull that pin from the outside. So let's move to the outside. Now we're looking at the outside of the frame. This is the side where the uh, differential lock pedal is um, so I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket now to uh, undo these two bolts or two nuts um, I'm gonna just do this and then get back to it because I'm gonna be here forever if I can't get in there at a better angle because of the camera but we're gonna take those two off the one that I was just on and then the one above it okay I got those two nuts off um, I left the u-bolt in there I'm gonna first push out that pin all right I finally got it out um, but it was tough so this rock shaft right here uh, is under spring tension from this spring um, so um, if you want to try to get that off it's gonna make your life a lot easier um, I didn't, I just kind of muscled it. Um, I had to put just like a, not like any kind of heavy, heavy glove. I mean, if you have like some other gloves, that would probably work. But I just used some light, some light shooting gloves, something like that. Um, just to help kind of protect my hand because this inner part right, sorry, looking at the screen. This part right here, um, that's not flat. It's like kind of angled, so it's sharp. Um, so it kind of digs into your hand. Um, just an observation of mine. I don't know, maybe someone else has a better way to do it. That's just the way I did it. But basically pushed back on that, held it up as best I could, and then quickly tried to maneuver the uh, cylinder here around, uh, you know, trying to get that uh, in the proper position to where I could get that pin out. And then I just pushed that pin out and everything fell right out. Got the cylinder out of the tractor, uh, essentially uh, just rotate it until these fittings um, clear where the hydraulic lines are, um, and then just very carefully pull it out um, towards the front of the tractor. Um, so then it tells us next, uh, I'm going to be doing 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 all together, and I'll uh, read through as I'm doing each step. So... It tells you to put it in a vise. Um, I'm guessing that's just to make it easier to, to deal with so you don't gotta hold it. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I'm not gonna do that. I don't have a vise here. Um, at least I don't have one mounted to my bench yet. So 
First, we're going to remove the two 90 degree elbow fittings currently on the lift cylinder and discard. So we're gonna take off these two. So first, I'm gonna use a 5 8 wrench and we will loosen the jam nuts on these. And then from there, we can unscrew the fitting. So next, there's a note, be sure that all O-ring fittings are on fittings before installation of elbow fittings and hoses. So in your bag of massive hardware, there's gonna be these two little fittings. So it tells you to make sure there's an O-ring on that end and to make sure that there is an O-ring on these ends, which this one, I can see it through it, so I know I'm good, and that has one. This one is going to made up to, let's see here, an end of this long line, which the long line has a O-ring on each end, so you won't need one for this guy. 15, install small 90 degree elbow fitting from kit onto rod end of the cylinder with fitting pointing towards the base end as shown. So obviously this is the rod end. Um, this is the small, there's a small and a large, they're very obvious. So we're gonna take the side, the side that has the nut is gonna be the one that's facing backwards. fittings so it's going to go in did I put this on the wrong way already it looks right can't be it's got to be smaller end oh because this side has the the nut makes sense I guess I'm the nut in this equation. So I can't do it by hand pass there, so we'll call that where we're gonna go. I'll do my best to line that up. And we will tighten that down. Trying to maintain it straight. There's a back one. So the next step is to install the install the small hose onto the 90 degree fitting. Uh, this one's obvious. Male on this side, female on this side. Um, so we'll just install this on there. Probably bigger than five eighths. Let's just use the adjustable. All right, to aid further installation, do not tighten large 90 degree fitting at this time. So install large 90 degree elbow fitting from kit onto short hydraulic hose with the elbow fitting facing upward as shown. Do not tighten at this time. So we're going to take our 
large fitting. That's going to go on here. And it says not to tighten this fitting all the way. So we'll leave this just hand tight to where we can turn that. I would imagine that's gonna play a part later on when we go to connect this to what's still on the tractor. 17, install large 90 degree elbow fitting from kit onto short hydraulic hose with the elbow fitting facing upward. We oh wait, we just did that. Step 18, install long hydraulic hose onto the base end of cylinder. Tighten hose onto cylinder. So no fitting on this one. It's just hosed directly into the cylinder. All right. And there is our new hydraulic setup. So the final step here is rotate cylinder rod cross hole until it is in alignment with the base and cross hole. So you can see these two holes are kind of off right now. So it says to rotate them. To do that, just have a punch here. We'll just put that in and turn it until it looks like it's aligned. And we're good to go. Set a break. Looking at the back end of the tractor now, um, we're going to be installing the cylinder back onto the machine. So step 20 and 21 we have from the left rear of the transaxle, install a cylinder onto the machine bracket as shown, and install base end with the shoulder pin and spring pin. So we're gonna be using this pin and one of these smaller spring clips and then if you look in here you can probably see up in here where the tip of my finger is there's that little loop that's actually a wire connector i think that's used for the pto kit um so we're just going to pull that back just a little bit to kind of get it out of our way but we're going to be working up in here that's where that's going to go so base end which means we're going to go hoses in first um the hoses are actually gonna go down and they're gonna go under that bracket. So it's gonna go in here like that. And then from the side of the tractor, there's a hole. That'll go through. And then you gotta put your pin in. Obviously not gonna be able to get that from here. So I'm gonna go to the front, get that in, and we'll be back. When putting that pin in, you'll probably just have to use some pliers. I had to get some pliers because it is pretty far back even when you're going from the front of the transaxle. So, next we're going to be installing the hoses. Um, there is a note here, short hose should be placed along the frame rail as shown. Hold tubes and hoses against the frame rail when tightening. Keep routing as close to the frame rail as possible. It helps prevent interference when installing brake and differential lock rods. So step 22, raise rod end of cylinder upward to aid in installation of a large elbow fitting to the hydraulic line. Temporarily lift the rod end of the cylinder to start the threads between D and rear hydraulic line A. 23, connect a large 90 degree elbow fitting on the short hydraulic hose from the rod end of the cylinder to the rear hydraulic line. Tighten both sides of the 90 degree elbow fitting at this time. And then another note, be sure step 23 is complete before step 24 or it will be difficult to complete hose installation. So essentially, do the short hose first, then do the long hose. So... Let's see if we can focus better on that aft part. Okay. So, back here, it's kind of hard to see because this guy's in the way. I'll tuck him out of the way. We're going to be putting that onto our fitting back there. Of course, this nut is going to attach 
Um, I'm going to attempt to do this without removing that because it's just me down here doing this. So, uh, yeah. Let's try to get this done. So I pretty much just took a Velcro strap and uh, used some of the holes in the frame at the back to uh, tie that cylinder up. So definitely recommend that. That seemed to help this out a bit. And now I just gotta get these started. Again, pardon me if I'm in the way. Can't really help that too much. And we got it started. Unfortunately, there's no quick way of doing this. There you can see, I got it on there. Well, maybe you can see, maybe kind of off to the side. Back. Yeah, you can see there. It's on there, I got it finger tight. Um, so it does say, Tighten both sides of the 90 degree fitting. So this is the one that remember we left loose. Um, so now we are going to tighten both of them. I'm gonna do that and then we'll just be back because I'm sure I'll be messing with it for a while. If there's any tricks I come up with, I'll let you know. Well, I don't know. I've tried for quite a while now. I think the only way you could probably do this is if you had a uh, wrench that had like a flexible open end on it. Or if you happen to have like a crow foot socket that was 13 16th. Unfortunately, my set only goes up to the size just under what you need. So I'm at about wit's end with this stupid one back here. So whenever you're uh whenever you're installing your new hoses on the cylinder when it's out of the tractor, just tighten that one straight up how it shows. Don't leave it loose. It's not gonna aid your installation at all. That hose is a little flexible. And that's all you need, really. You don't need that hose to move around. So I'm going to let it go for now, finish installing this thing. And if I end up having to take it back out, I'll take it back out if it ends up leaking. But I don't know. I guess I'll be able to test it here shortly and see what happens once I get these all set up. Next is to connect the long hose to the other, the other hydraulic line. So, what happened to my O? Make sure your O ring's there. The O ring just fell out of mine. You want that, or you'll probably have a nice, nice leak on your hands. Hopefully, that'll be my saving grace with that other line since I'm unsure how tight it really is. John Deere did a really good job making this about as complicated as it could possibly be for people. Um, I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna have to lower that cylinder. started. It seems if these are the same as the other, you got a 19 millimeter on the rubber hose side. If I can even get it in there. Boy, this is just a, a really fun install so 19 millimeter there and we got again the 
ridiculously huge 13 16 for the other end. I'm gonna move you back or I'm gonna be hitting you. Seems like these actually go pretty easily and then like once they're tight, like they get tight. Now, my only concern is that one looks far tighter than the one on the other end. That's definitely concerning. And yeah, it would be very hard to tighten that other one any further. I, I really don't know how you do that other. I'm just gonna have to I guess turn this bad boy on now and see if it leaks. So that is our cylinder hooked back up. All right, I just uh, started it up. I ran the hydraulics a couple times back and forth, pushing the, the cylinder in and out. And I, I put some paper towel up there, some sh uh, blue shop towel. I didn't really notice anything on it. There was a couple little spots, but I think it was more so just trying to get it up in there. There was still some fluid uh, from when I had drained it. Um, I figured if it was leaking out, anything significant, I would have seen it. So I'll keep an eye on it, um, especially once I hook, you know, an implement up, get, you know, some weight on it, uh, see if that changes anything. So the last step, though, um, they tell you to install a cable tie or zip tie um they don't supply one with the kit oddly enough it's not even listed in the parts list um, but they they have you put one on there it's supposed to go around this hose and then around the large 90 degree fitting um it's to keep from interference with uh i guess the the brake and differential lock uh levers so i'm gonna Try to fish one of these through here somewhere. Let me just check one more time to make sure that's supposed to go along that fitting underneath. It says to the side. We'll call that good. All right, so finally done with all those stupid hoses. Uh, next is step 26 and 27. We're going to position the long slotted end of the lift strap over the pin on the lift bracket as shown. Install washer and retaining ring. So we got our long lift strap. This is the lift bracket. It has a pin on it. This is going to be the washer. And I need to find, so it's going to use this little spring clip. So, goofy thing, the picture isn't super clear as to if this is going on. this direction or this direction it appears probably this direction though if that makes sense um just based off of the lines uh i'm sure we'll find out soon enough i don't know that there's really any other pictures that are going to show it too well other than maybe where it attaches. We'll go with that. So. That is a really bad drawing. Put that on. What I do, there's the spring clip. That should just probably push right in. It's one of these other parts. There we go. 
moving on. Now we are at step 28, slide the pivot plate towards center of the machine. Um, we already kind of did that earlier. We may have to move it again. We'll do that when we go back under there. Um, there is a note, the lift strap should exit the rear of the machine between the lift cylinder and transaxle housing. Um, then install lift strap and lift plate assembly through rear of machine. So that's what we're gonna do now. Hopefully I have this on here correctly, but we're just gonna put this through. between the transaxle and the lift cylinder. And this is where hopefully we'll find out whether I put it on the right way. Install lift bracket to the mower deck rock shaft with two bolts and nuts tighten hardware to 22 pound feet. Slide, slide pivot plate back towards outside of the machine as far as possible. So let's head underneath. So back underneath, uh, you can see right here, the rock shaft for the mower deck. Um, we're gonna be using this combination of flange bolt and nut. There is gonna be two of them. So I'm gonna, you can see there's a hole here and here. That's where uh, this bracket's going to attach. All right, I got my, uh, the bolt and nuts in there with some Loctite on and I was wrong. The, uh, the strap goes the opposite way. I looked further on in the instructions and uh, they do go the other direction. So I'm gonna tighten these up now. 13 millimeter is gonna get these tightened. And there we go, got our strap installed. Next, slide the pivot plate towards the center. Like such, it wasn't really not center. Uh, next, we're going to install the brake rod in reverse order of removal in the same hole on transaxle lever in which it was removed from. Install diff lock rod on the reverse order of removal. Check to make sure tie strap E is holding base hose D to the side of the 9 degree elbow on short hose. So that zip tie that I showed you. Make sure that differential lock rod and brake rod do not rub on hoses. So I already started putting my brake rod back in. Um, remember that just slides in at the top. Uh, you gotta put it back in whichever hole it was in when you started. Um, so I'll make a note to make sure you remember that at the beginning. But I went back, looked, mine was in this front hole. We put on the little washer that was on there. And then it had a little ring clip. All right, now we'll move over here a little bit. And we gotta put back on the diff lock rod. So that's back in. It's a bit of a pain. Um, you may have to mess with the actual pedal for the diff lock a little bit. Uh, I forgot mine fell some so the hole wasn't lining up and then i realized all you got to do is push up on it and then you can kind of work the pin in there also make sure that that diff rod goes over the rock shaft also make sure that your diff lock rod doesn't end up above the link cylinder you will not be able to get it uh, back in make sure you have it down here down below you can see where that link bends down in there. I put that back. I put the washer back in the clip. Uh, couldn't really video that. I would have been way in the way. And let me just say it is a lot easier. Uh, 
taking that out, then putting it back in. But it wasn't too bad. After that, just uh, make sure all the different linkages work and that none of them are rubbing any of those rubber hoses that we added. And that pretty much does it for the assembly of the retrofit kit as they install it. Uh, why we would need to retrofit a brand new tractor with a brand new hitch, I, I don't know. I really wish this is just something that they would install the cylinder that direction from the factory, install a rock shaft from the factory. Um, I get it. That's one of the reasons people say, hey, just buy a 1025R. But, uh, hey, is what it is. So we got that done. Um, stay tuned for the uh, assembly of the rest of the hitch. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.